In Cordyceps and War Ravaged Seattle, her face appears repeatedly on murals. Her teachings inspire a community living on the island that was once the Lower Queen Anne suburb, and her death made her a martyr in a war with no prospect for peace. But we don't even know her name. So who was the prophet of the Seraphites? Before the Cordyceps brain infection outbreak in 2013, the woman who would become the prophet was a doomsday prepper who had stocked a bunker with enough supplies to sustain her entire community. She claimed that her reason for gathering these supplies was a vision of divine retribution, a vision that she believed came true with the outbreak. Whilst the claim of apocalyptic visions isn't new or unique to the prophet, she won the community of Lower Queen Anne over not just through the supplies she had gathered, but by keeping them alive for six months after the outbreak, before they were discovered by Fedra. Despite the surrounding neighbourhoods being overrun, the survivors following the prophet had managed to keep their streets and homes clear, all of which made her sermons about Cordyceps being a punishment from God for humanity's sins are more convincing. When discovered by Fedra in March 2014, the community appeared to be on the verge of starvation and low on supplies. Despite this, swayed by the prophet's message, they refused the offer to be integrated into the Seattle quarantine zone, and opted instead to remain under the prophet's leadership. Fedra didn't seem to mind this, having their hands full with the insurgency of the Washington Liberation Front, and so choosing to respect their wishes. Over time, without the upkeep of the city's roads and infrastructure, flooding overtook much of Seattle and Lower Queen Anne became an island. This allowed the Prophet and her followers, the Seraphites, to build a community free of old world technology. They built farmland and logging camps to sustain themselves, their homes constructed of wood and warmed by heated stone hearths, smaller villages in the orbit of their main town of Haven. They would also cut scars into their faces, as acknowledgements of mankind's innate imperfection. Accounts differ as to how the conflict between the Seraphites and the WLF began once Fedra fell. When travelling through Seattle in search of Abby Anderson, Ellie Williams would find notes from residents who had been attacked by the Seraphites. A pregnant woman called Paige locked herself into an old conference centre after being attacked by Seraphites who shouted that she was a sinner, and died there of a sickness her husband Simon was out seeking medicine for. However, Simon was shot and killed by a Seraphite arrow whilst moving through the woods after taking supplies from the hospital. However, she also discovered accounts of the WLF executing people found to have Seraphite sympathies, including a boy called Jimmy who was detained for stealing but then executed when the WLF soldiers discovered he had a Seraphite prayer in his pocket. Abby believed that the war with the Seraphites was the result of the Prophet destroying trucks along a supply route and killing a WLF patrol. However, Lev told her that it was the WLF's persecution of the Seraphites that left the Prophet with little choice but to fight back. Whatever the case, at some point the WLF managed to capture the Prophets. Accounts from soldiers who were guarding her at an outpost suggest that while some of the WLF were abusive and antagonistic towards her, others who spoke to her found her persuasive and began to question their own side's propaganda. This led to the WLF's leader Isaac Dixon deeming her too dangerous to keep alive and ordering her execution. Her death led to the Seraphite elders taking control of the community, and Abby learned from Lev that most of the Seraphite's more extreme ideas, such as viewing the likes of Lev as an abomination for being trans, were adopted after her death. Though not explicitly confirmed, it's implied that this also holds true for the elders creating forced marriages with younger and underage Seraphites, or needing to give their permission for couples to have children. Very little of this is fully confirmed. On the one hand, the prophet being a woman and women being allowed to be soldiers seems to contradict socially conservative views on sexuality and gender roles, whilst on the other, her teachings of a simpler lifestyle based on rejecting modern technology would appear to go hand in hand with such views. Like the truth of the war with the WLF, much of the prophet's teachings, and what the elders held true or distorted, is clouded in ambiguity. What we do know is that a truce with the WLF was attempted, only to fail when WLF soldiers executed a group of Seraphite children who threw stones at them. This led Isaac to focus the WLF on an invasion aimed at exterminating their community, which Abby got caught in the middle of when trying to rescue Lev and Yara from the island. This would lead to Isaac's death and the seeming victory of the Seraphites over the WLF. Years after the Prophet's death, her community and followers still stand, whilst the architect of her persecution and death met his end on the land she liberated. However, it is unclear just how much of her true message has been retained by those who now lead her people. Let me know in the comments what you think of this deep dive into the lore of The Last of Us, and if you want more videos exploring the history and side stories of the games. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to keep up to date with all my content. Like the video that just popped up, which YouTube thinks you should watch next. This is a Patreon and member supported channel, so if you want to become a member and unlock custom badges and emojis, early access to my videos, and your name in the credits, then click the join button below. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.